I'd like to welcome all of you to Ebai Island. This is Ebai, home for people from all over the Marshall Islands. This is a very crowded island. 9,000 people live here, perhaps more than that. It's very crowded. There are so many people, and nobody seems to care about keeping the island clean. It's just like the slums. This island is not very big. It's only 66 acres in size, but it's so overcrowded. Just imagine, over 9,000 people on this tiny island. They have been relocated to Ibai in order to avoid danger from missile testing in the middle of the atoll. This is my house. These are my people. My own children and grandchildren. We in this house represent only half of the family. In here are the youngest children and some of the women. Over there on the sofa, that's my wife. And next to her is the wife of one of my brothers. This is our family home. And this is our life. The many children in this room whom you're filming how are they going to survive in the future? They themselves, their children, their children's children, who keep multiplying and multiplying. I'm obligated to prepare a decent future for them. Because Ebai is such a very tiny place, overcrowded with eight to 10,000 people, there are a lot of diseases and epidemics on this island. Diseases like typhoid, dysentery, polio. There have been many adults as well as children that have died from these diseases and epidemics. And I'm convinced that the main reason for all of this is the extreme population density on this island. The missile testing began in 1964. At that time, the Americans moved all the Kwajalein people from the other neighboring islands in this atoll to Ibai to live. They built a place to test missiles on Kwajalein Island, which is just two miles from here. They told all the people there was going to be a missile or a rocket testing program. I'm 
Today, I think Kwajalein is very important to the Americans in their weapons testing programs, especially to conduct the Star Wars program. Star Wars program. Full system tests would soon start here at Kwajalein against ICBM targets. Many Kwajalein facilities had been enlarged and improved for the influx of army and civilian personnel and their families. A hospital, schools, and all the necessities of a typical small town were available. At its peak of activity, Kwajalein became a community of about 5,000 inhabitants. The Army officially announced establishment of the Kwajalein Missile Range on October 1, 1960. Kwajalein Missile Range is the Department of Defense National Range, and it's used by many users, including the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy. With our tracking facilities out here, we also do space shuttle work. Uh, the various users test various missile systems, and our job is strictly to track those missile systems and provide data using the tracking facilities that we have here on the range. Uh, the range itself is spread out from the north end of the atoll to the southern end of the atoll, and in between are the various measuring facilities uh, to check the trajectory and the operation of the missiles as they come into the range. Uh, Kwajalein is a very important range to our national defense, and it's considered a national asset by the Department of Defense. On island, organized sports activities include almost everything, football, soccer, we have basketball, volleyball, handball, tennis, swimming. We have a Kwajalein Golf Association. They do hold tournaments several times a year. It's a nine-hole golf course uh, designed to play 18 with two sets of tees. Very crowded on the weekend. Some people like to play after work in the evening. It's not easy to par this course. A lot of that has to do with the natural elements, the hard foundation of the coral underneath the grass. Your ball tends to go in all kinds of directions when it hits. And you also have a constant wind problem blowing in off the ocean. We play winter rules here all the time because of the conditions of the fairways. As you can see, it's a very narrow golf course. And usually the only thing separating one fairway from another is a very thin strand of the coconut palms. It's not your typical spread out type golf course that you'd find in the United States. Most people enjoy it. Now I'd like to explain what is the most important thing to the Marshallese people. Well, it is the land. I might not have any money. I might not have anything. But as long as I have land, I can consider myself a worthy person. Land is precious to the Marshallese, more so than gold, pearls, and everything else. Because an islander's life is rooted in the land. One who has no land is worthless. He doesn't exist. I'm aware of this island's importance when it comes to space war, and I'm aware of its importance to America. But this island is just as much or more important to me 